Hello class, today um, I'm going to give you a small lesson on how to draw um, outdoor scene in uh, two-point perspective. So I'm going to do a two-point perspective drawing. Uh, we have done some blocks uh, and we have done a drawing of an indoor project um, and um, you guys kind of got an idea of how to approach two-point perspective and learn how to draw the blocks as well. Um, same concept here is going to come together uh, full circle uh, for our last project in perspective, um, at least in two-point perspective here. Um, we're going to use same two vanishing points. Uh, horizon is going to be a little higher uh, as it is here in the uh, indoor drawing. Um, but the same concept of blocks and uh, structure um, still present here um, in this lesson as it is in the previous ones. So, to start off in the outdoor drawing, in two-point perspective, once again, you will need a horizon. Just bring it up a little higher this time. Um, not, so, um, not so in the middle of the paper, just give you more ground space rather than the sky. And I'm arbitrarily just uh, eyeballing here, um, giving me a nice little horizon. There's it. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put the vanishing point here. One. And vanishing point two over here. Once again, don't make circles too big, um, just enough to see them and put a pencil down on there. So um, you don't have a too big of a line where you don't know where the actual spot it going to. I may have actually made this a little too big, but it, it'll be fine. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. All right, so with this picture plane here, we're going to draw a few things. We're going to draw a couple of different houses. Um, we're going to put some windows on them, a door, and um, maybe some little extra things such as a uh, chimney or um, uh, shutters or something like that. Uh, we're going to draw a uh, road. Um, but you will have a concept uh, or chance, choice, choice of drawing a road or railroad, and uh, the concept is the same here, uh, same exact one. Um, so the approach will be the same, and I'll explain to you why and how, and what are you going to erase, comparing to when you're drawing the road, and uh, when you're drawing the railroad. We're going to draw a birdhouse as well, some telephone poles, um, and um, a few little things that will be freehand drawn in this project. So let's start off by um, drawing a simple road. Um, in this case, um, in the one point perspective, you have in the lesson that I have posted before, you pick two lines out of the vanishing point. Uh, this case, you will do the same. You're just going to pick each, whichever vanishing point you would like, this one or this one. And I am going to pick my left side here. So I've drawn one line, that'll be one side of my road, and I'm going to draw another line from the same spot. Let me just road nice and wide a little bit. So there you go. So the road is right there. Um, now, you can't place the lines, uh, little hash lines here that are uh, in the middle of the road that you drive, you can see. Um, you can't put them arbitrarily here because that just won't look right. In perspective, there is always a rule. Um, how do you approach that? And in uh, one point, as whereas in one point perspective, we have just drawn horizontal lines and then crisscrossed them from corner to corner, found the middle, and then started going from corner through the middle to the next, or in this case from here, through the middle to the next, to the, when, when it hits the left side, and go across horizontally, come back one, right? And just go horizontal. Well, in this case, it's two-point perspective, so you're going to have to, let's place it a little higher, okay. You're going to have to pick a couple of lines that go to this vanishing point, opposite vanishing point, and uh, place them here. And yes, it is going there. Don't believe me? There it is. Uh, all right. So pick another one. Let's just pick a decent spot. Okay. So we have two lines. 
two lines now arbitrarily picked which which were where i placed them what what gap i created it was completely arbitrary so we're going to crisscross these lines from corner to corner from this line to this this dot to this dot and from this corner to this corner and once we cross them you will find the middle that's how you find the middle of the shape is by crisscrossing from corner to corner. Then from that middle, you're going to draw to the left vanishing point here, vanishing point one. And once that line is drawn, now you can create a concept going here um, where you are not arbitrarily, but in a perspective uh, way, creating the delineation of lines shrinking as they go towards the vanishing point. So let's uh, pick a corner, let's say this corner, and go through the middle, where the middle line crosses the next line that we picked, right? It was horizontal line before, but now it's a line that goes to that vanishing point. So we'll go from here through here until it hits the next, the side line here. Once it hits that spot, we can go from this vanishing point over here, from the right vanishing point, from vanishing point two, go through here. So that will be a step one, two, and then come back, come back to previous spot. Not, not the first one, but the previous one. So draw this one, go back to previous one. That'll be step three. And then from here, once again, through the middle that crosses the next line. Hopefully it'll be straighter than that. Yeah, there it is, this is better. Okay, so right there, not this one. Uh, disregard that line. Sometimes the rule lies to me. And there we go. And with that fashion, it's gonna get flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter as it goes towards the horizon. Okay, so I'm gonna continue, come back, you know, do a couple here, a couple more. You're going to do these until you have literally no space to draw them anymore, and then you're just going to shade them away. There we go, from the right version point through here. And that is how you build that spacing correctly in two-point perspective. Now, what happens here, you draw on a road, you're going to draw these lines right here, and every other one you're gonna erase. So if I, if I say I've drawn, let's draw this really quick, just to show you guys, of course. So, I'm going to pick a spot here, and we'll go another line to the bench point on the left. Just to give it a little space here, okay, create that middle hash mark, right? Every other one you're going to erase in between spaces. Every other one. And then, of course, you're going to erase the side lines, and it will just create these little spaces here. correctly in perspective to create your hash marks on the road. If it's a railroad, you're going to erase entirely everything in between, all that in between, and just leave these lines. That'll be your railroad ties. So you're gonna have these lines, you're gonna have railroad ties, okay? So that is the difference between drawing a road and a railroad in two-point perspective, as the same thing in the one-point perspective. But in this case, you only need to draw one. But if you feel like you have time to practice and you feel like doing that, doing so, draw a railroad next to it. Draw a railroad right there, right next to this. And do the same 
technique, pick two spots, which in this case, I would pick them a little closer. Since railroad ties do run a lot closer together, and do the same technique, crisscross between the corners. Okay, draw from middle to the vanishing point. Okay, and then start going from corner through the middle. Then from the vanishing point, from the right vanishing point through there. And then come back. And then I'm gonna show you, okay, so I don't, I don't feel like drawing through the entire thing. I know it's going through that, I just mark it really quick. Uh, I'm not gonna draw all the way, so I don't have to erase as much. From vanishing point, come back to previous one, to the middle. There I go. From vanishing point. And so on and so forth, they'll be going away into the vanishing point and get to the point where they're just a little shaded lines there <laughs> and far away. So that'll be the railroad. Okay, road, railroad. All right, so let's move on to drawing a, um, a house. Let's make, uh, make a couple of houses. Let's, uh, we're gonna draw a house over here that's going to be above and below the horizon. And we're gonna draw one that's below the horizon. All right, see what the differences are. As usual, in two-point perspective, you will start with a corner. Corner of the block, right? From one end of the block, go to the left vanishing point, and the other end of the corner of this line, vertical line, I'm sorry you go to the same left vanishing point again. Remember, the only time you will have horizontal lines here if there is something laying exactly on the horizon. Try to avoid that for a distorted look. They will create a little fun um, challenge here. Just always try to go above and or below. It will create a little better look for you, um, less troublesome. So, drawn two lines there, two lines there. Now I pick where I want my building to end. So there you go. There's my one line, and let's make a longer house. There's the other line, all right? So we have this little side, this little side. Now we need the top of the building, right? Well, I'm going from the opposite corners to the opposite vanishing point. Why, once again, if it was a side of the box and you look at it, they'll be parallel to each other. If they're parallel, they go to the same vanishing point in this case. So from here, let's go to this corner. And here we go, we got a nice little building here, right? We're in uh, one point perspective, okay? In one point perspective, when you draw on a building, all right, you crisscross, and draw a vertical line to find the middle. And in this case, in the front here, if you did that in the front, you could just measure this line right here and find the middle, no problem. Where in two-point perspective now, you don't have the flat rectangular side. So whichever side you're putting the gable on, make sure you measure, uh, crisscross it, sorry, from one corner to the other and find the middle that way. That is the only way to do that in here. Crisscross. I know it's going there, so I'm not really worried. So from here, we go vertical, parallel to the side of the building, up. Okay. Now from here, the technique is the same in one point perspective as a two point perspective. Since you found the middle here and it's right there, from here you can go to this vanishing point and find the middle of the back of the house, which you need. So from here, then we we'll go over here. Found the middle over here in the back. I'm gonna draw that vertical line. Okay, so we know where the gable ends in the back. So from vanishing point, I'm gonna draw to the front of the vertical line here, front vertical line. 
That'll be the top of my gable. It goes parallel. This should be parallel to this side of the building. If you ever see the house from the side, that's exactly what you see. So then you can just drop from that middle to the corners of the building. Okay, and from the back right here to the corner of this back build of the building. You don't have to drop here because, well, we won't see it. It's a solid building, so we, don't have, we won't see that, so you don't have to do that. But right here, you drop to the back, right here, over here, to the left and to the right. You have a nice little gable. You don't have to push it any further, okay? You don't. It is fine. This is just the way this is, okay? If you did want to extend it, just extend this line from that vanishing point, just like it goes. Okay. Right there. Dropping kind of trying to be parallel more or less to that. And there's a little extended cable of the roof here. Um, if you wanted to kind of play with it a little bit. Okay, so now, um, let's draw a window. Window, once we have it here, just start with the vertical line where you want to place. So I place this edge of my window here on the left side of the building. I will go from here out of the left side of the vanishing point. Since this side goes there, I'm going to continue that trend and keep going there. But you will see we use the right vanishing point as well. So I did this. I pick a spot where I want my window to end and go vertically up. Okay. Then since we have to view it as there is a, some kind of edge to the window, a little trim or something. We have to say, okay, so you can't see this through this. It's a wall blocking it. Because if I was going to go through the vanish point here, you won't see it. It's going through the wall. But it's an opening, so we'll go from here to that vanishing point there. I already had a line there, so I just continued that. And then from here, vertical. And then from that corner spot to the left vanishing point, out until we hit the side of the window. And there it is. Windows there. Say we place a door here on the right side of the building here. I'm gonna draw a nice tall door here. So that's a vertical line. I use this line right here that I already have. Draw there. From here, I'm gonna drop vertically as well. Now, the opening is going to go to the opposite vanishing point here because it's on this side. And this side went there, this side goes here. So from the corner to the left vanishing point, then I go vertically up, parallel to my vertical lines here. Okay, so I see the side of the doorway, like a door casing. And then from this vanishing point, I just continue through here, out. And there's my little threshold and then from my left vanishing point I just pick a spot to where I want my doorknob there okay it's going that way so it has to still and then I'm gonna go to that vanishing point and kind of draw this way so then I can play around with it and say and just create some kind of doorknob like this all right you can create any kind of doorknob you'd like but try to be creative um it is your house after all you're drawing. So we've drawn this, we've drawn the door, we've drawn the window. You can, you know, play with the window as well and kind of place different things in here. Apologize, there's a fly in my shop here. In my little studio, so I ended up here. So um, now let's uh, just add a little extra something here. Uh, let's add a uh, chimney. So I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw one that's so tall that goes above the horizon, right? So there, remember it's gonna cut into the roof, so the roof slants this way. So we're gonna go ahead and for a visual slant it this way and pick a spot here. And go nice and vertical. I'm lining it up here, making sure it's vertical. There. Okay. So that'll be the front corner of my chimney. Kind of like this was the front corner of my building. Front corner of my chimney here. 
So from here, I'm gonna to go to this vanishing point here. Say my chimney stops here. So I'm gonna draw another vertical line, just arbitrarily for now, right? Here, I'm going to decide where my chimney ends. So I'm gonna pick, man, let's go pick this spot right here. So right there to the left vanishing point. And then going to the right vanishing point from here. And that is simply little, simple little chimney for you guys. Um, nothing special. Um, then you can, of course, you know, play with it and, you know, create, uh, say, go to that vanishing point, you know. As a cover, okay? So you still have to see it in perspective. As a little color, <laughs> okay. So now, you can get creative, you don't have to draw stuff like that, you just draw maybe bricks, you know, a bunch of bricks. So um, that is the idea anyway, of this uh, little chimney on the house, okay? I know it's extraordinarily large chimney. All right, so let's draw a house that is going above and below the horizon. All right, so I have my vertical line. Let's go from left side, I'm sorry, from the bottom to the left side vanishing point here, one. And from here, same way. Then we'll connect the right vanishing point to the same spots. Once again. There I go. And here I'm just going to pick a spot vertically, 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 lining it up. And there's my house, right? There's a house probably built, probably larger in comparison to this house. This house is a little bit in the distance and is this large, so I'm assuming it's probably a large house. So we'll make it, mm, let's say, a two story of some sort. Okay. Let's place a gable over here on this side. Let's go from corner to corner once again. Corner to corner. And then go vertically just like this. There. Okay. However, what's going on here? We don't have the back of the house here. We can't see that. How do we find the middle over there? Well, for this situation, go from the opposite corner like we would have been finishing the building or block. Go to that vanishing point from there, okay? That'll be arbitrary finished back line of the uh, back of the house, top line. So from here, you just connect to the vanishing point on the left here, okay? And here you go. That would be your middle of the back of the house. So now we have both lines. We can go from here to find the top of the gable and drop it to the left side. Okay, dropped it. And now we'll go from here to the front corner. From here to the right corner. Well, front left corner, then the right corner. I said front corner. But you know what I mean. From back top to the left back corner. And there is your gable for the house that would be above and below the horizon, okay? All right, so let's say there, are, let's place some windows on this house, same, same concept. I'm gonna place a couple of small windows here. So I'm gonna arbitrarily draw two lines here. This is gonna be just to show that they'll be exactly the same then from the left vanishing point because they're on this side. I draw the top and bottom of it. And then I pick where I want it to end, the window. Since it's a two-story building, I'm gonna draw it on top. I'm not gonna draw the bottom ones for now, just to show you how this works here, since they're above the horizon. Then from the top corner, right here I've drawn from the bottom corner because if I did, from drawing from the top, it will go through the building, correct? So in this case, if I draw from the bottom, corner, left corner, 
see what happens. It will go through the actual building. So I can't really do that. So let's draw from the top corner, shall we? See what happens there. Oh, look, we can see the opening. We can see that little crease here. All right. So now I can pick a spot right here. So I pick a spot that will determine this side as well, this window as well. So from here, from the vanishing point, through this little spot, I go there and I go there. So I create a little corner for me as well here. All right, so we proportional perspective. Since I made these windows alike, one's gonna be smaller, one's gonna be larger because it's closer to you, okay? So there are the windows. The door is the same way, guys. Door doesn't really change much. So let's say place the door over here on this side. Slightly above the horizon. So we're going from this vanishing point on the right, right? So this vanishing point since it is on this side of the building. There you go. Then from this corner, just like we did on this one, because we can see it, I'm gonna draw to the left vanishing point. Then we'll have to go from here too, because it's above the horizon. We'll be able to see some of that as well. Very thin, very thin. And then vertical line. And from this vanishing point through that little corner, I'll give you a little tiny bit and then once again through here so just to show you you can see a very tiny bit here very tiny bit why it's because we're playing so close to the horizon okay and it's so small um that we can't really see that as well as we can see it on this house okay all right Let's get back to where we were. All right. Now, um, next uh, subject matter is uh, telephone poles. Okay. Uh, my advice, um, if you want to get um, really interesting with it, yes, you can draw them right here, right in front of this building. Um, you can also draw them going somewhere behind those buildings and out in the back. But um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and draw them. So that to make a, not to make a huge confusion here, let's just draw them uh, over and behind the buildings here. Um, so in this case, just like the road, you have to pick one vanishing point first. Since they are going to usually go just towards one vanishing point at a time, okay? And since they do only do that, we're just gonna pick a height Let's say they're really tall over there in the back somewhere. And they're going to go towards this vanishing point. I have a whole line on. The only thing you have to watch out for is. So I drew a line to the vanishing point from here and to the left vanishing point from here as well. Only thing you have to watch out for is if this line is going below this house, it won't work most of the time. That means we're talking about this house either floats or these uh, telephone poles, if none is standing on the actual house, somebody placed them really incorrectly and run power lines right through the, where the house is. So that probably would be a bad uh, idea on the engineering side of things. Um, if I was an engineer, I wouldn't do that. So, with that said, let's pick these telephone poles far apart from each other. There is my second arbitrary telephone pole. One, so one, two, okay? Same thing, crisscross them from corner to corner to find the middle. And promise you, this vanishing point will come into play and I'll show you where. So from this vanishing point to this vanishing point. I'm sorry, this corner to this corner. Whew. So found my middle, now I'm taking that Connecting it to the left vanishing point here on the vanishing point one. There I go. Don't get super confused. I know you can get that way. 
All right, a little closer to show you here. All right, so you have them there. You have the middle line. Once again, same thing, just like a road and railroad over here, okay? You found it, then you go from one corner through the middle out until you reach it and then go to the other vantage point. In this case, it's basically a one-point perspective uh, situation where you go through this middle, you found that, you draw it vertically, okay, come back, go through it, through the middle where it crosses the next telephone pole until it hits that line, then we draw it again, okay, same thing, you have to do it even though it's blocked by the, by the houses, okay, you have to do this, so I went from here to here actually, so, so from here to there, See, not so you, you can find where it comes back. So, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. There. Go vertical. Okay. And it gets smaller and smaller as they go away. So, in the end, you can erase these. You won't see them, these two. But they, we needed them to determine where they're going to come out behind the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just the way you're supposed to use a perspective in this case. So, once you've drawn the telephone poles, of course you can erase all these lines in between them and the top lines as well, okay? However, now you know that telephone poles have these little crossbars here, right? You know, that have their lines actually attached to them, power lines that run through them, okay? So, in this case, they were horizontal in our one-point perspective. In two-point perspective, this is where second vanishing point comes into play, okay? You go from vanishing point two, awkwardly, through there. Okay, so once you have that, I have one spot and two spot here, and a three spot, that determine, determine the sides in the middle of my crossbar. From here, go to the vanishing point on the left. From the side as well. From this side as well. And we'll create three lines. And then from this vanishing point, you're gonna go through where it crosses the middle. So the middle line, you're using it as a guide. From vanishing point, we'll line up with that. Okay, I've drawn a really long one, so. Can you believe the crossbar is gonna be that long? So make them shorter over here, make them smaller. This will make it a little more believable, okay? But in the end, that's the actual approach here. And then you go to the very last one over here in the back. And it's gonna go, oh boy. So make them shorter. Maybe, okay? So, proportionally, they'll be a lot smaller. I <laughs> uh, got a little ambiguous here. Um, but in the end, you know, swing some lines, so on and so forth, just disappear behind the house. Okay, and that will give you an idea of the telephone, telephone poles and two-point perspective here. Okay. That's that. So um, let's draw a little bit of a tiny little birdhouse here. I'll say this house, you know, enjoy birds. So start with a little corner here. Okay, corner. It's connected to the vanishing point. It's just like we're drawing a block, small little tiny block. So connect to top and bottom to this vanishing point, like we always do. Connect the bottom and the top of this line to the right vanishing point. And then vertical lines, however small you want your birdhouse to be, to where it faces. And then connect the back, you know, opposite corners to opposite vanishing points in this case. There I go. That's a block, right? Okay. Well, I hope it works. <laughs> 
So let's uh, determine this gable is going to go over here on this side. So we're just going to line it up at the same house, you know, let's go same gable here and same gable here. And let's go this way. And then vanishing point. So crisscrossed, found the middle, then go vertical up, make a nice little tall gable. And then since I found the middle here, we'll go to this vanishing to find to vanish point to find the middle of the back of the birdhouse. It looks like right here. So from this vanishing point, we're just gonna take it off the top a little bit. All right, and then connect to the corners, front top to the front corners, back top to the back corner. Oof, did not like that. That's better. All right, so we have the little tiny house here and to determine, we're gonna draw this bottom line real quick. Let's see. Okay, so say for about here, yeah, it doesn't matter, yeah, it's fine. Just nice little two parallel lines out, rounded out at the bottom, some grass. And we have a little birdhouse. You can, of course, draw an opening, and maybe since it's going to the vanish point, find a, a little um, piece of wood that sticks out that bird can sit on before it gets in that house. Uh, decorate it however you want, you know, a little shingles, something that look like scales. Uh, but um, try to create some kind of interesting and then little birds maybe sitting here flying around. Uh, choice is yours to kind of personalize this a little bit. And, uh, you know, throw some trees here in, in, in there somewhere, you know. Say there are trees here near the house. So we have trees, and of course you can raise stuff you can't see behind the tree. Right? Some limbs growing out of it. So a few trees, um, of course you'll be required to draw, and or in my class at least you do. And um, maybe some little figures, right? Well, some figures, figures of well, humans walking around. Um, and as we discussed before, in art one, drawing a little human being, tiny one, in this kind of situation where it's very small, a lot of times we don't want to see this, right? I hope not. So that's definitely a no. So what you can do is to use in your advantages O and W technique that a lot of people know. So O is for the head, right? N is for the body and W is for the legs. At least give human some kind of shape to start off with. And then you can draw an arm or he's waving, um, maybe a little hat here, right? Something like that. Give him some kind of impression here. Then maybe some shoes, maybe some pants on the person. Yeah, head in the pocket. And uh, just a little idea of drawing a human rather than drawing him this way, you're actually giving him some kind of shape, him or her. Maybe even extend shoulders and give him some shoulders too. All right, so that's the basic idea, O and W, all right? So, I'm placing a human is gonna be about this tall and you know, regular. So O and N W. There, just a little, some hair, and there we go. Just a little human in this picture plane. All right, very simple. Nothing serious, nothing super detailed. No stick figures though. Try to stay away from those. <laughs> If anything, I taught you. I hope you know how to not to draw a stick figure. Um, so in this case, this drawing is um, pretty much done. Um, birds over here, if you do draw a bird, uh, let's see, uh, simple shape for a bird. 
It's a, let's say, simple shape for a bird. So you have, you know, the head, the body, usually oblong and thinner towards the end, and the tail, right? Some kind of claws, a beak, maybe with some feathers sticking out, and then finish the body by maybe enlarging it and creating some wings. You don't have to get super detailed, but the basic idea is here, okay? So here I'm just going to draw a little bird here, sitting just so it's not so, uh, not one of these. <laughs> Although you can play some of those in the background if you feel like in the far, far away. Maybe draw a little tree line, then there's some trees or something growing in the horizon. Remember, come out of the horizon. And then, because in the distance, if you color it, you're going to have to color probably a little bit of a blue or purplish tones. And since it's far, far away, tree line. Sometimes it is greenish and you can throw some of that in there. But All right, guys, this is a bit of a lesson in two-point perspective outdoor. Hope you enjoyed this, hope it helped you, and uh, hope to guide you to draw on your own, and uh, good luck!